Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So fourth instalment on the knurling tool build and today will be the final video in getting this thing all machined and assembled and then towards the end of the video going to be testing this out for the first time and seeing what sort of nails we can produce. So with that in mind let's head over to the lathe and crack straight on today with making the turning knob which will tighten this tool down. Over on the lathe then, we're going to be making these adjustment knobs from some EM3B mild steel. So this is a 25mm diameter bar and for the largest portion of the adjustment knob that is going to be just under 25mm. But for the smaller shank section we need to turn that down to just over half an inch so we're going to be taking some heavy passes as we go until we get closer to that final diameter and seems I've got my feed and speeds dialed in just correctly because the chips that are breaking off this thing are coming off really nice. Coming close to the end now then and I've just backed off that depth of cut just to make sure I don't overshoot my measurement. So with that looking like it's all done last thing left to do now is just add a little chamfer on here just to give it that nicer feel when hand operating. Now with the turning side of this done I need to come back in with a 5mm drill bit and drill this out ready to accept the M6 tap. So to do so I've started off with a stub drill just to make sure that doesn't wander and then coming back in with a normal jobber drill bit just to take out the rest of the material. With that hole all now done, I'm going to come back in with an M6 tap held up here in my chuck, which I'm going to feed in with the tailstock. So once I got this thing started and I knew it was going in straight, I actually stopped the lathe and resorted to hand tapping, just because I didn't want to bottom out the tap and end up snapping in this deep hole. So... Backing the tap forward and backwards and until I got that to the final depth it needed to be, that hole was all finished. And the last little operation now to do on the lathe is just to part this off. So using the power cross feed on the lathe makes parting off pieces like this really easy and you actually end up with quite a good surface finish. So with that all part now done, heading over to the milling machine to put in the cross drill which is going to accept the handle part of this. So using the trusty old hamer gauge again, we got our zero positions all located and that enabled us to drill centrally through this cylindrical piece. So here you can see I'm using a 6.2mm stub drill just to get the majority of that bulk of material out the way and then coming back in with a quarter inch reamer as the silver steel provided in the kit is also quarter inch. So the last four videos have come down to all the parts that you see on the bench here and now we're going to assemble this and see what the final finished product looks like. So just to throw out there over this weekend as well, well, over last weekend now should I say, I built another quick change tool holder to permanently house this thing. But, enough of that, let's get this thing built and put together. So, face plate goes on, pivot pins go on, beautiful. That goes on there like that. That goes on there. And as we know from previous videos, that goes on there.
So the last thing left to do is lock tight the handle in and let all that set. Once that's set, I think we'll try this thing out on the lathe. Got the handle all locked tighted in now and that is all set and we've moved over to the lathe to give this thing a test. To start off with then, going to be testing this thing out on some brass. This will it'll probably give it the best fighting chance to see how this thing performs as brass is quite a soft material. So going to give this a whirl, see how it goes and if it does well on this we'll try it out on some steel. Before starting the knurling procedure then, I'm assuming it makes good sense to oil it fully up. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And then from there, I'm coming in with the knurling tool, setting it to it's in sort of the halfway point in the material, and then tightening down the knob. From there, I just set the power feed and sat back and watched this thing perform some knurling. Once I got to a point where I thought that was enough nails for now, I just backed off the power feed and stuck it into reverse. So coming back down in a sense, doing a sort of double knurling pass, hopefully making these nails a lot more defined. Well, first time using this knurling tool, and the first set of nails it's produced have turned out really nice actually. They're quite a fine nail, not like the sort of usual coarse nails that you used to sort of seeing in the machine shops, but for a fine nail, that's quite nice actually. So I think I'm going to try this thing out next on aluminium, and then once I'm happy it's good with brass and aluminium, we'll move up to a bit of EM3 mild steel bar. So before moving on to the mild steel, I thought I'll just try this out on some aluminium. So same sort of thing as before, put a lot of oil in this, tighten down the knob and sit back and watch this thing go. So the only thing I did notice different about the aluminium compared to the brass is it seemed to be making a sort of tearing sound rather than the knurling sort of noise that the brass was making. So whether or not this will be an issue, we'll find out after when we analyse the free materials. But for now, moving on to the steel, and that seems to be knurling really nicely. Nice little shot there of the knurlinator. So same thing as before, move along the bar, stick it in reverse and come back down again. So with that being done, I'm going to go back over to the bench now and we'll check these things out and see how all three have turned out. With these three metals then, all nailed and completed, it will be a really good time to take an up close and personal look at these on a sort of micro scale and see how the nails really turned out up close. When it comes to looking at these nails then, let's start off by looking at the brass as that's the first one we started with. So initially from looking at this, it's got a really nice defined fine nail pattern. The only thing noticeable is there is a sort of witness line coming across here. And I believe that's probably where I started and stopped the knurling tool. And only this portion here got a single pass. So other than that, the results in brass are really nice. Let's see if that will focus. There we go. So yeah, those fine nails are really nice. Something I will be trying out in a later video, whether or not it makes it to a video or just features in one, is gonna be the use of some coarse straight cut nails. So me personally, I really like the look of the coarse knurling. 
and this fine knurling, uh, I don't know if I'm going to use it that much. So moving on to the next material, that was the aluminium that we looked at. So the aluminium now has, hasn't actually turned out pretty, well, it hasn't turned out well at all really. It's more ripped the material rather than giving it the sort of diamond nail pattern that we were looking for. And overall the sort of surface finish on it is quite poor. So you can see some very slight nails there, some very slight diamonds. But for the majority of that part, all it's sort of done is torn it up. So I won't be probably using this tool on aluminium. I think mainly because, because of the fine tooth pattern on the nail, it just seems to have bunged up the material and because of that ended up ripping it. So finally the mild steel bar over here. This one actually turned out really well. I was pretty impressed with how this thing came out. So for the majority of these nails they've turned out pretty well. Again it's very hard to tell you on camera how well these have turned out because the pattern was just so fine but the actual grip and feel of this is really nice and I'll definitely be using this finer nail if I'm ever going to do it in a harder material like this. So generally, two out of three, not bad. There we have it then. The Hemingway knurling tool is all finished now and all operational. And I've got to say, this build has been really fun. I've learned a lot of new fixturing ways along the way. Um, a lot of things that I wish I had here in the workshop. Stay tuned, you might see more of this or look on the community post. But really, this has been a fun project. If you're a beginner machinist like I am, Building one of these things from a kit is probably a really good way of going. And if you're not pushed for time, no stress attached to it. Now, that sums up this series of videos. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Series like this, I hope you guys look back on in the future and sort of enjoy. Because it's been fun making it, so... I'd like to share that with you guys. Other than that, that sums up today's video. Hope you guys have a good week and I'll see you next time we'll be back here in the workshop.